This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is a ZWO ASI Air. This is a Prima Luce Lab Eagle. And this is a refurbished Lenovo ThinkPad. What do these three things have in common? They're all computers capable of controlling all the gear that makes up a full astrophotography rig. The ASI Air and the Eagle are custom built for astrophotography with a bunch of added features uh, that make them ideal for that purpose. While the laptop requires additional hardware, like a Pegasus power box to match the feature set of these two. Over the past month, I've been using all three computers side by side. And in this video, we're gonna explore everything that I've learned. And hopefully you'll leave this review with a better sense of which computer is the right choice for your Astro Room. Hi, my name is Nico, and since this video is a review, I'm gonna start with a couple quick disclosures. Woodland Hills Camera and Telescope, which is an awesome store for telescopes and all your other related astronomy gear and astrophotography gear, has loaned me this Prima Luce Lab Eagle for the purpose of this review. So thank you so much to Woodland Hills. The ASI Air was bought uh, with help from my Patreon campaign, also for the purpose of uh, this review and a couple other videos. And the Lenovo laptop is something that I already own personally for astrophotography. This video does have a sponsor, which is Squarespace, and I'll say more about them midway through. This is likely going to be a long video because uh, these are complex devices, so I have a lot to cover in a review. But I'm going to be organizing my various thoughts and tests and things into chapters on this video, so it will be easy to skip to whatever part uh, you're most interested in personally. I'm going to start with a brief history of these devices and how it intersects with my own history in astrophotography. I got really going with deep sky astrophotography back in 2016. And back then, most people I met used Windows laptops, so that's what I used. The major downside to this is the laptop has to be physically cabled to the gear. And so you had to leave it outside right alongside your rig. And so what most of us did was put the laptop in a plastic tub uh, to protect it from the elements. And then you need power, so you use you know, probably a heavy lead acid battery and maybe a power inverter to run the laptop and, and everything else. Uh, my tub here even has a cloak on it that I uh, added on, so if I'm at a star party, I can enclose myself and not bother other people with the light coming out of my laptop screen. Now, around 2017, I noticed people in my astronomy club starting to use mini computers like Raspberry Pis to control their gear. So they would just log in over a Wi-Fi network, start a session, and then walk away. And they wouldn't have to leave the laptop out cabled to the gear. And another advantage was the mini computer was using substantially less power since it doesn't have a screen like a laptop does. And sometimes they call this a headless computer when it doesn't use a screen. And so I wanted to try this, but I wanted to use the Windows software that I was already used to. And I knew, you know, worked with all of this equipment that I bought and the software stack that I liked using. And so I got an Intel compute stick and I put all of my favorite Windows software on it. And I tried to make this work for a few months and I had some good nights, some bad nights, but it never really took because I just found the whole experience a little bit too frustrating. Like it was a little slow and laggy compared to my laptop. And in retrospect, I think it was sort of a combination of the base model compute stick being a little underpowered for Windows and all those softwares. And then uh, I also didn't really understand like Wi-Fi antennas and all of that. Uh, so I got so frustrated that I switched back to laptop only and I swore off any sort of computing device that uh, for astronomy that I had to control wirelessly for a long time. But during that time, so from 2017 to today, of course, I've noticed that the ASI Air and the Eagle get more and more popular every year. And so I finally decided, you know, I need to get over my own baggage here and really try these popular units out with a clear head in a review. And spoiler, they worked a lot better than I even could imagine. I think part of the reason they do work so well now is 
there have been many iterations since they first came out a number of years ago. So for a quick history of that, the first ASIR was released in 2018. It didn't yet have the 12 volt power outputs. And I think it was based on a Raspberry Pi 3 because uh, it didn't have USB 3 ports yet. Then in 2019, we get the ASIR Pro. That's an improvement because it adds the USB 3 and the 12 volt power outputs. But I understand it had some issues with Wi-Fi for a lot of people. And then this ASIR Plus that I have here, this was released in 2021, and it seems like a nice refinement on the Pro version. And then just last week in 2023, they released a version of the ASIR Plus that expands the internal uh, storage from 32 gigabytes to 256 gigabytes. They also now have an ASIR Mini that just came out last year, which is $100 less than the Plus. And the main difference seems to be that there is no USB 3 on the Mini, only USB 2 ports. The first Prima Luce Lab Eagle came out in 2015, and then they've had regular updates since then. So we had the Eagle 2 in 2018, that was announced at NEF, the Eagle 3 in 2019, and the Eagle 4 in 2021. And now the Eagle 5 just released uh, two weeks ago in 2023. And each one has been getting progressively better, more advanced with more sensors, more uh, options, better computers inside. And today, Prima Luce has a few different versions of the current Eagle. There's a very stripped down version called the Eagle LE that doesn't include the I uh, sky quality sensor or the GPS module. And then they're still selling one version of the Eagle 4 and now three versions of the Eagle 5, the S, the Pro, and the XTM for maximum power if you need it. So what are the exact models I have here for this comparison? I have the ASI Air Plus 32 gigabyte version, the Eagle 4S and a Lenovo X1 Carbon ThinkPad with 32 gigabytes of RAM, an i7 processor and a 512 gigabyte SSD. And I bought this refurbished. So let's start the a bunch of comparisons we're gonna do with the price comparison. The ASAR Plus 32 gigabytes is 299 US. The Eagle 4S is discontinued, but it did sell for 1595. Probably the closest to what they have now is the 5S and that's selling for 1695. My refurbished laptop was $1,000 when I bought it, but I needed to add a Pegasus Ultimate Power Box to get all the power routing and USB options uh, that these units have. And so that added $630 to put me at around $1630 for the laptop setup. And then none of these prices include cables or power adapters, uh, which can realistically add up to a couple hundred dollars depending on what you need. The Eagle cables tend to be a little bit more expensive than your standard 12 volt barrel connector cables, but there are key differences in that the Eagle can, uh, cables can handle more current and that they um, are also locking. So it's not an apples to apples comparison there. The operating system for these are a customized Linux for the ASI Air, Windows 11 Enterprise with the Eagle, uh, and it comes with pre-installed software for the Eagle uh, control, and then anything you want on the laptop. But I'm choosing to run Windows, uh, so I'll be treating this as a Windows laptop for this review. In terms of internal storage for your images, after we take out the space used for operating system and software, we have around 20 gigabytes on the ASIR Plus, 200 gigabytes on the Eagle, and 470 gigabytes on the laptop. Of course, uh, all of that is expandable. You can get different versions of the Eagle with different size drives and all of this. Um, and now the ASIR Plus, the same thing. You can get the 256 gigabyte version. Um, for battery, both the ASI Air and the Eagle don't have internal batteries. So you need to power them with either an external battery or an AC adapter. The laptop does have an internal battery and a big reason I went with the Lenovo is that it has very impressive battery life especially considering how thin it is. As long as it's not like super cold out, like negative 20 below freezing, the battery can last about six to seven hours if I'm careful about keeping the display off when I don't, uh, when I'm not using it. And speaking of displays, of course the ASA Air and the Eagle don't have displays, so you do need a separate device like a phone, a laptop, or a tablet to control them. And 
the control device, the viewing device, of course, has its own battery life to consider. Okay, next comparison is mount support. The ASI Air seems to work with any mount that has an Indy driver, which is most telescope mounts on the market. The Eagle will work with any mount that has a Windows or ASCOM driver, and same thing with the laptop. And uh, next up, we have camera support. The ASI Air has support for Canon, Nikon, and Sony DSLR and mirrorless cameras, as long as they have Indy drivers and all current ZWO cameras. It does not work with astronomy cameras that aren't ZWO, even if they have Indy drivers written for them. The Eagle and the laptop will work with any camera that has a Windows or ASCOM driver written for it. Okay, and then there are other accessories like focusers, filter wheels, observatory domes, flat panels, camera rotators, polar alignment cameras, and you know, the list goes on from there. The ASI Air will only work with ZWO accessories, which at the moment is their EAF for focus and their filter wheels for automatically changing filters and soon their camera rotator. And again, the other two, the Eagle and the laptop will work with anything Windows or ASCOM. Um, so common refrain here, basically anything out there has Windows support. In terms of software, the ASI Air only runs the ASI Air software via its app. The Eagle runs its own control software, which comes pre-installed, plus any software that can be installed on Windows. And the laptop can run, again, anything on Windows. Let me take a quick break from talking about Astro Computers to talk about websites. Uh, today's sponsor is Squarespace, and Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for designing and hosting a beautiful website or portfolio. And I was amazed when I went to redesign my personal website, nicocarver.com, just how quickly I could put something really professional looking together with Squarespace's templates. I just chose one that I thought looked good. I dropped in my photos into these different categories and um, it's, it's super easy just to upload uh, new photos, just like I'm showing you here. And Squarespace handled the rest. It's uh, You don't have to learn any kind of coding because everything that you see on screen is what you're going to see on your website. And there's still tons of options for personalizing it to how you want it to look. So I think this would be a really good choice if you uh, want your own website to show off your astrophotography with your own domain name. So if you're interested, head over to squarespace.com slash nebula photos, and it'll start your free trial. And then if you like it after the free trial, you can get 10% off your first purchase with the code nebula photos. Okay, next up, I wanna do an overview of the physical characteristics, including the ports and the special features of each device. So let's start with the ASIR Plus. This device weighs about 240 grams, very lightweight. It comes with a Cinta style shoe, finder shoe on the bottom. So you can attach it to your telescope if you have a spare uh, Cinta style finder shoe attachment spot open. ZWO did put a finder shoe on the side of the AM5 mount, but then actually retracted that and said, don't put the ASI Air there because it can interfere with uh, mount operation in certain positions. So they suggested you can move it to the side of the saddle on the AM5 if you have the right size screws. But I'm perfectly happy with just putting it on the actual telescope since I usually mount my guide scope on top here, which uh, frees up the finder shoe for the ASI Air. The ASI Air uses the same 2.1 millimeter center pin barrel connector for both power in and power out. The four outputs are all 12 volts at a current of three amps, which is gonna be fine for most stuff you'd be attaching to it. But please keep in mind, if you wanna power your DSLR or mirrorless camera with a dummy battery, you are going to need to solder in a step-down converter because the dummy battery requires 8.4 volts and these ports are 12 volts. So if you just plug the dummy battery in without that step-down converter, you could fry your camera. Uh, so be, be very careful. If you're, if you're using a dummy battery, make sure you're using a step-down converter. And then the other thing to keep in mind with these power ports is the standard for dew heater bands is not this 2.1 millimeter barrel connector, but what's called the RCA plug. Uh, so ZWO does sell a DC to RCA 
uh, double RCA uh, cable that you can use your dew heater bands with the ASI Air. On this side, we have two USB 3, two USB 2, and one Ethernet jack. USB is pretty self-explanatory. That's, of course, for connecting your camera, your mount, and anything else, any other accessories. Four ports is usually enough, but if you're using a ZWO cooled camera, those have two additional USB ports on the back of the camera. So in that case, you'd have a total of six USB. The RJ45 jack for ethernet can be useful. The main way I've heard people are using it is if you're having any issue with the default Wi-Fi on the ASI Air, you could connect the ASI Air to a travel router like this TP-Link AC750 Nano, which is about 40 bucks, and that would create its own wireless network that may be more stable than the one that the ASI Air creates. Now, I don't suggest going out and buying this travel router immediately. It's really only a suggestion if you're having problems with the wireless on the ASI Air, but um, I didn't have any problems. I'll save my, my thoughts on that for a little bit later in the review. I, I think this ethernet cable connection can also be used for file transfer, but I didn't test that personally. On this side, we have a micro SD card slot. If you need more storage than the roughly 20 gigabytes provided with the internal storage, this would be an easy way to add more. We also have a USB-C port, and this is only used for transfer of your images. Basically, if you connect the ASI Air to your computer with a USB-C cable, it will show up as an external hard drive. Now, if you have a newer Mac laptop and you try to plug it in this way with a Thunderbolt cable, it's not going to show up. There is a workaround, which is you just need to use a USB-C to A cable and then a dongle or dock of some kind, and then it will work just fine and it will give you those USB-C speeds for transfer, which is it's a very nice feature. And then finally, on this side, we have the Wi-Fi antenna, some status indicator lights, and some physical switches for on-off and reset. Next, let's look at the Prime Luce Lab Eagle and its physical characteristics. This device weighs about 1270 grams, and it has a plethora of connection points uh, on both the top and the bottom for connecting it to your astrophotography rig. What I've done here is I took the top handle off of my Ascar 130PHQ and attached the Eagle with three quarter inch 20 screws that came with the Eagle to the top handle right down the middle of it. And then I reattached the top handle and Eagle to the telescope and that seems to be working really well. Uh, it's, it feels quite stable. It does make the telescope a little bit harder to move around uh, because I don't have the use of the handle anymore, but eventually I'd like this telescope permanently mounted in an observatory because it's a nice big telescope. I don't really consider it a travel telescope. And in that case, it would work fine because it would be permanently mounted. Both the power in and power outputs use an uncommon but not proprietary connector. It's a three prong M12 screw connector and the input can handle up to 16 amps in. And for outputs, we have two ports at three amps and two ports at eight amps. So if you have something that draws a lot of power, uh, those eight amp uh, current uh, ports are, are pretty handy to have. These are all 12 volt. So just like the, with the ASA Air, if you do want to power a DSLR or mirrorless, you need an appropriate step down converter. But a nice thing with the Eagle is you can actually buy many of these cables all put together for you with the dummy battery and the step-down converter all in one finished cable. So that's really convenient. Continuing with power on this side, we have three RCA plugs. These are adjustable from zero to 12 volts. So the way that most people use these is for dew heater bands. And if you want to have the voltage adjust automatically by using an environmental sensor, then you need to buy the Echo add-on from Prima Luce Lab. And the main advantage there uh, with an environmental sensor is that you can save on power if you're running off of battery. Next to these, we have the GPS antenna, and this is neat in the, uh, on the controller. It tells you how many satellites it's connected to, and then it gives you your exact uh, coordinates and altitude, and mine was perfectly correct every time I launched the Eagle. Continuing on this side, we have a Thunderbolt 3 port with the USB-C connector, and this can transfer data at 40 gigabits per second and also provide 15 watts of power. And with all the Eagle 5 models, they've kept the Thunderbolt 3 port, but also added a Thunderbolt 4 port. 
I did test this port on the Eagle 4S with a Thunderbolt 3 rated external SSD from Samsung, and it worked completely as expected. You also have two HDMI ports. I did test these as well, just to make sure they could, uh, the Eagle could really run a dual monitor setup if you wanted it to, and it did. I'm guessing most people are going to run the Eagle wirelessly, but the HDMI options are useful both for initial setup and maybe some other uses. We also have two USB-A ports on this side and an ethernet jack. And then up here we have the I, and the I can actually be mounted here or on the opposite uh, end, depending on how you want the Eagle mounted, but the eye should point in the same direction as your telescope, because what it does is it gives you a live reading of your sky quality in the standard unit for measuring that, which is magnitude per square arc second. So this is measuring how bright or dark your sky is. And this is the best way to really know how bright your sky is, because it's more objective than uh, the Bortle scale, which is just based on uh, you know, naked eye uh, observation. I compared the eye on the Eagle 4S to my Stars for All TAS photometer, and I found the readings matched up perfectly. I, I looked at where my setup was pointed, and both the TAS and the eye gave a reading of 21.2 magnitude per square arc second. I'm a bit of a sky quality light pollution map nut, so the eye doesn't completely replace the TAS for me since the TAS is a custom unit with an app to create these all sky brightness maps, which I like having. But I really do appreciate the eye, and especially because in the latest version of the Eagle Control software, they've added the ability to export logs of your eye readings, uh, which is awesome because you know, that data, I, I would totally use that and plot my readings throughout the night and see how the sky quality sort of changed. I think that's really cool. On this last side here, we have a bunch more USB ports. So there is a total of nine USB ports on, uh, on the Eagle 4. And then on the Eagle 5, you get 10 total USB ports because they've added that Thunderbolt 4 port with a USB-C connector. We also have dual Wi-Fi antennas and the status lights. And the status lights can be turned off completely by putting the Eagle in dark mode. And that's done through the software control interface. This is really handy for star parties where you really want your rig to not be emitting any light. I also just wanna add here that there are some new sensors on the Eagle 5 system, on all the Eagle 5s. There is an inclinometer and a motion detector. And the idea with these is to aid in accurate polar alignment with the inclinometer and with the motion detector, it would be the ability to reject frames automatically if the system is bumped physically or even hit by a strong wind gust. Okay, and then finally, this is my Lenovo ThinkPad Carbon X1. This laptop has two Thunderbolt 4 ports with USB Type-C connections, two USB 3 Type-A ports, and a full-size HDMI port. The Thunderbolt 4 ports do double duty as power connectors, and one nice thing is even after the internal battery goes on this, I can use a anchor power bank to extend the battery life. So I don't use power inverters anymore because there's really no need when you have the internal battery plus a power bank. But of course, nothing special on this laptop for astronomy in terms of ports, no power management or anything like that. So for that, I use a Pegasus power box, and depending on the setup, I'll either use an Ultimate power box or a Pocket power box. With the Ultimate, in addition to being a power distribution box, it can also control a Pegasus focuser. It's a USB hub where you can control the USB ports independently, turning them off and on, and it does do heater control, um, as do all of the, the power boxes from Pegasus. Basically, if you take away the GPS, the eye, the Thunderbolt ports, and the internal computer from the Eagle, what you're left with in terms of a feature set is pretty similar between the Pegasus Ultimate and the Eagle, in that they both offer full control of the power ports, the USB ports, and the dew heater ports. Next, let's look at connectivity. With the laptop, I just uh, have a single USB 3 cable running out from the Pegasus power box to my laptop. Everything else is routed through the Pegasus. Now, there are a few issues with this. One is with USB 3, you're limited to a cable length of about three meters, unless you get a very expensive active cable with a powered repeater in it. 
So when you're actually controlling the setup, you need to be pretty close to it. Um, so what I do is I bring out a table in the tub, as I mentioned, and have that laptop right there. With the Eagle, you could attach a monitor, keyboard, and mouse and, and control it in a wired sense if you wanted to, but that's not how most people are going to use it. Instead, most people will use something like Windows Remote Desktop uh, and open up a remote session, and then you can control the Eagle from another computer, like a laptop, on the same network. And so I tried this from various devices. It always worked quite well. I could be sitting in my living room on my MacBook Pro with Windows Remote Desktop open and be monitoring the Eagle from 50 feet away because they were on the same uh, network and not really have any performance issues. And so the Eagle can work like that. That's called host mode, where both the Eagle and my MacBook were connected to my home Wi-Fi network. The Eagle can also create its own wireless network. That's called AP mode. And if you do this, then you connect to it directly. You connect to the Eagle's wireless network. And this is, of course, useful when you are away from home, like at a star party or a dark site. The same goes for the ASI Air, but the ASI Air, its default way of working is that AP mode. That's how most people use it. It creates its own network. You connect to the ASI Air uh, wireless network, and then you are good to go. But if you do turn on station mode, then you can connect uh, over a home network, uh, just like the Eagle. And the advantage, one advantage to that is that since you are on your home network still, you can both be on like your home Wi-Fi and connect to the internet and also be connected to the ASI Air. In AP mode, you don't get to do that. Now, another point with connectivity is what kinds of devices we can control these computers from. And the good news is everything is fair game these days. Starting with the ASI Air, it is app-based, so you might think that means you need to use an Android or iOS device, but no. You can actually now access your iOS apps on your macOS computer if you're in the whole Apple ecosystem, or you can emulate Android apps on Windows with Bluestacks, which is a free Android emulator. So for me, this makes the ASI Air much more desirable because I really don't like using it on my phone. I just think that the screen is too small and I don't really find the touch interface that great. Uh, I really prefer working with a mouse and keyboard. That's just me, uh, but you know, there might be other people like me who like the big screen experience for astronomy apps. But the ASI Air app works great uh, that way. Uh, another reason I much prefer actually using the ASI Air app on my computer is the connection is just really great. Uh, if, on a phone, you really usually have to mess around with the phone settings so that it doesn't kick you off the ASI Air Wi-Fi. And even after I mess around with those settings, it's always giving me messages telling me this network doesn't have internet access. So I didn't run into any of those issues when controlling it from my MacBook Pro. And this leads us to connectivity in general, and uh, this is where I was actually the most surprised in testing these devices. I expected a lot more problems with like dropouts and uh, you know just things freezing up than I actually ran into. Uh, granted, I only tested for a few nights, maybe four nights over the course of a month, but I just really didn't run into any wireless issues. I found both devices could go through a single wall, so I could control them from inside the house about 20 feet away. If I was outside and I had line of sight to the antennas, I could go a really long way. I estimated about 100 feet before they would drop out entirely. I, I wanna say before I reached 100 feet, it would get slower and slower, performance would get laggier and laggier uh, and, and take a lot longer to load images. Uh, that started happening around 10 feet for the ASI Air and around 30 feet for the Eagle in AP mode. But my main point here is that they both worked well enough with the wireless that I could actually see myself using them. Uh, you know, like I said towards the beginning of the review, when I tried to homebrew this with my little compute stick, I always found it very difficult. I just wasn't getting the reliability that I wanted. Um, even after I got the travel router, it didn't work as well as the Eagle does right out of the box. Okay, next up is feature set. And to be honest, the ASI Air has come a long way and it was a lot more full featured than I thought it was. The main things it can't do with the software 
are basically limited to just the fact that it doesn't support things like environmental sensors for changing uh, the voltage on the dew heater, or uh, it doesn't have, you know, USB connected flat panels for automated flats, all kinds of automation things like that. And those kinds of things are probably most important to remote imagers or just imagers who've built a lot of automation into their home uh, backyard observatory, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that they sort of, those kinds of imagers already sort of know all of this, but it's just something to keep in mind if you just keep adding more and more things to your setup that the ASIR does have some limits with how much you can automate. Um, Another sort of related disadvantage uh, in feature set is that the ZWO only makes, uh, you know, only supports the ZWO accessories and ZWO only makes one basic electronic focuser. It does work pretty well, but something I dislike about it is that it doesn't have a clutch. So I can't switch back to manual focus like I can with my Optech focuser, which is really handy. If you, if you, if you wanna, if you're testing telescopes, it's, it's sort of essential. But if I wanted to use the ASIR and also have automated focusing, then I do have to use ZWO's EAF. And that's just one example. I do think, uh, you know, it's an amazing piece of tech for the price they're selling it at, but unless they really open it up to other manufacturers, uh, devices for all the accessories that I want to use. I'm probably not going to use it except for a quick run and gun kind of setup like I have here with the AM5 uh, and I don't need anything fancy. Now, what does the Eagle do that my laptop plus Pegasus power box does not? Well, one thing is it uses less power, so that's very nice. It has the eye for the constant monitoring of sky brightness. It has a GPS antenna, and it takes all the functions of the laptop plus the power box and puts them into one sleeker uh, box that'll probably hold up a lot longer outside than the laptop since it's all enclosed in this very durable aluminum chassis. And then next we have software. And I think the main story here is ease of use. Both the Eagle control software and the ASI Air software are super intuitive, but often ease of use does come at the price of flexibility. So the reason that both the Pegasus control software and the ASI Air can be so simple to understand and use is because one company is making both the hardware and the software. Well, if I use something like Nina or Sequence Generator Pro, those, or APT, those are gonna be more complex software packages because they need to support all of the different hardware configurations and drivers that you can throw at them um, because they support everything that has a Windows driver, an ASCOM driver. So it's a little bit of a different situation I'd think of it more as sort of being a power user if you need all those features. Of course, the Eagle is giving you both things. It's giving you the easy control software, but also all the power user options, because like I've said a number of times here, it's just Windows in there, so you can install any software control package you want. Um, you don't have to use like Prima Luce's Play software. It's just an option. You can, it's an open system you can use Nina or Sequence Generator Pro or APT or, or any of the different, or Voyager, anything that comes on Windows. When it comes to the ASI Air, uh, even though you know I'm not a total convert yet, I can definitely see why the ASI Air is so incredibly popular. It is remarkable how smooth they've made the whole experience of setting up your night of imaging and how well it works for a $300 device of this size. It really does lead you through the settings. Uh, it streamlines things. If I only used ZWO products, I'm sure that I would be fully on the ASI Air train. Now the Eagle, on the other hand, I'm thinking about um, getting one eventually. Uh, the main reason why I'm seriously considering it is I'm planning to build an observatory, hopefully this summer. And I think the Eagle is exactly the kind of computer that I would want in there. Uh, with all the automation and, uh, you know, things you can do in an observatory. You could set up Sequence Generator Pro to open the roof and start the, the imaging and everything. And the Eagle is sort of like the perfect brain for controlling all of that. Okay, here are a few images that I captured while testing these devices. This one is M81 and M82 with uh, some IFN. 
taken with the ASI Air and the AM5 mount and an Ascar FRA 300. And here is the same Galaxy pair taken at 1000 millimeters and the EQ6R. And this was mostly done with the Eagle, but I also took some photos with my Lenovo laptop with the same software stack just to see if I felt any performance differences. And as mentioned before, I didn't. The Eagle was really snappy, even though my laptop has better specs on paper. One additional thing about software that's interesting to think about, uh, I came into this review thinking about these three computers solely for acquisition of your images, taking your images under the night sky, not processing those images after you take them. But the truth is for a long time, I was using this laptop for processing as well as acquisition. I did eventually move on to a desktop machine for processing, but this laptop still works perfectly well as long as you aren't doing huge mosaics and you can be a little bit patient with uh, Pro, you know, pre-processing. So that's definitely a factor to keep in mind. Um, and the Eagle line, uh, especially with the Eagle 5 line, seems to be moving in that direction of an all-in-one with how powerful uh, they're, they're getting. Uh, part of the idea there with, a, with an all-in-one is you could do pre-processing right on the Eagle and then just send out the fully calibrated images to your cloud drive or your network drive. And I think for a lot of imagers, especially remote imagers using uh, the IMX455 chip that produces those huge file sizes, this is gonna be a very attractive option, the new Eagle 5 XTM. The ASI Air does offer some live stacking features uh, that does support using calibration frames as well. But as far as I can see, it doesn't save the calibrated masters, your actual calibrated subs. Um, that are going into the live stack. It only saves the final live stack. So that's more of an EAA, electronic assisted astronomy uh, feature than an astrophotography feature. Okay, I know that was a ton of information, but to sum up my thoughts here, I think if you want the best astronomy computer on the market with all the bells and whistles, but also complete freedom to choose whatever hardware and software you want, go for the Eagle. If you're just getting started and you don't want to go with all ZWO products and you already have a Windows laptop, use that. And then lastly, if you're okay with going everything ZWO in terms of cameras and accessories, then the ASI Air really does make a lot of sense from a value proposition. $300 for everything that it does is an amazing value. After seeing this review, if you're ready to make the switch and embrace the future with these dedicated astronomy computers, both the Eagle and the ASI Air are available from Woodland Hills Camera and Telescope. And the link to purchase these is in both the description and a pinned comment on this video. If you have any stories or opinions about using the ASI Air or the Eagle or a laptop, please feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, let's have some good discussions. And uh, speaking of good discussions, if you love astrophotography, which I assume you do if you're watching this video, I think you're going to really enjoy my Patreon community. We are closing in on 1,000 members and it's just a very supportive and welcoming group of astrophotographers. They're all very open in you know, sharing knowledge and we do a lot of really fun things together. We do uh, Zoom calls, uh, monthly imaging challenges, a bunch of uh, private channels on my Discord server where people are talking all the time. And in addition to all that, you get direct messaging support with me. So if you have any questions, uh, you can ask me and I'll get back to you usually within a day or two. So I think it's well worth checking out. Uh, my Patreon starts at just $1 per month to join. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. Till next time, this has been Nico Carver, Clear Skies.